in the work of the Lord for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. The labor of all church workers shall never be in vain as our Father, the Father of all globally, the convener of GCK, Pastor Dr. W. F. Kumui gives us the Global Church Workers Conference live from Taraba State, Nigeria. All church workers and ministers globally to join hands with all ministers across Taraba State, Northern Nigeria from 17 to 20 November 2022. It's our time for triumphing in ministry, even in troublous times. Pastor Dr. W. F. Kumui will be ministering 8 a.m. daily from Jalingo, Taraba State, to the world, brass satellites, and on all our social media platforms. It will be an avalanche of global expositions and revelations. Your labor will not be in vain. When we started the year 2022, you had hopes, you had desires, you had dreams, but suddenly, all over the globe, we read and hear of failures economically, politically, with climate change and security breaches here and there. And now, I hear a voice echoing towards the northeastern geopolitical zone of Nigeria. Now, I hear a voice echoing towards the northeastern geopolitical zone of Nigeria. Today, the Lord is saying, weep not. All your tears are dried, because behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David has prevailed. And it's confirmed that there's still one hope, one way, one solution, and one power that never fails. The power of Jesus Christ reverberates this November with GCK live from Adamawa State, Nigeria. The land of beauty set to beautify your life through Christ. As the covenant of GCK, Pastor Dr. W. F. Kumui will touch down in Adamawa, Nigeria with a power that never fails. Healing, deliverance, salvation. November 24 to 29, 2022. 1600 hours GMT daily and 0700 hours GMT for Sunday worship service. Young people from all levels will be empowered for excellence at the Impact Academy on November 26, 2022 at 0600 hours GMT. Ministers and professionals will be empowered for breakthrough in ministry on November 25, 26, 28, and 29 at 0600 hours GMT. Our guest gospel minister is Bob Feetz. This is an avalanche of manifestation of the power that never fails for all life. Power will herald your celebration. Dr. William Kumui says, Be it confirmed in your life in Jesus' name. GCK, the gospel to every creature. In one of the questions, uh, the people who wrote the question said that they thought they would be ministered to on the area of deliverance and things like that. And our brother already answered the question. But I now want to have some practical session uh, so that we look into these problems. And so if I were to put a title or, you know, things to what I want to say, it would be deliverance for the oppressed. <laughs> we look into the word of God briefly and then we go to the practical session and get what the Lord has provided for us. In Psalm 27, we're looking at verse 1, Psalm 27. Verse 1, the Lord is my light and my salvation, whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life, of whom shall I be afraid? In one of the questions, the person who asked the question, perhaps a brother or sister, said that he had been 
initiated or given over uh, to the powers of darkness one way or the other before she became before he became a Christian. Now becoming a Christian, he has fear as to what may happen. And we have different cases like that too of those who have been involved one way or the other, either through their parents or through their own initiative. They had done something wrong and they had given themselves over to the powers of darkness. When you come to the Lord Jesus Christ, there is a change of masters. You are with the devil before now, you are with the Lord. But then you do not automatically get free from all those things many times. First of all, one of the strategies of the devil is to bring fear in your heart that this may happen to you, that may happen to you. If you believe those fears, then you are on the side of the devil. And then, being on his side, you give him the power to continue to torment you. But let's look at the word fear itself. I'll use some words uh, to help you understand what fear is in the perspective of the believer. You may want to write this now. I use the letters of the word fear. F-E-A-R. False experiences appearing real. You see, those things have not happened yet. And the devil is, uh, you know, because he's a liar, he's telling you you will die. He's telling you you will never succeed. He's telling you you are going to be drowned. He's telling you you are going to have accident. He's telling you that you'll never get married. He's telling you that if you get married, there'll be no children. He's telling you that if you have children, then those children might be lost. He's telling you that you will never finish your education. He's telling you that if you have that certificate, you'll not be able to get work. He's telling you that if you got the work, you'll not be able actually to spend the money on anything uh, real, anything useful. False experiences appearing real. Those things have not happened yet. But then the devil so paints the picture and it appears as if you're already in that experience. In fact, sometimes the fear is very strong. You picture yourself and you see yourself in that trouble already. It appears to be an experience, an experience but it is false. False experiences. But then to you, it appears so real. And so fear is just simply false experiences appearing real. When I was a younger Christian, I had some little difficulties on this side. And the reason I had the difficulties on that side is because of the things I plunged myself into before I became a Christian. You see, I was born in a religious home. And in the religious home I belonged to because it was a polygamous family. And there were a lot of attacks, a lot of things that those women did against one another. And I happened to be the first son and the first child in the family. And the one born just before me, I didn't know that individual because he or she had died before I ever came. And uh, when I was very young, uh, it also happened that when they were feeding me, I just, you know, passed off. And uh, so my mother was very afraid. And also the, my middle name, that's why they gave me the middle name because the first person before me didn't actually survive. So when I came, they wanted God, one way or the other, to watch over this individual. And so they gave me that middle name. And then uh, because of a lot of things happening, you know, taking that food and I passed off like that, and for many years my parents will not allow me to take that kind of food. I take that food now very easily without any problem. And uh, because of all those things, you know, the polygamous family, the fact that, you know, I knew the significance of my name, I knew the troubles, you know, there were. And in the locality that I came from, my father uh, tried to protect by not allowing me to go home because he'll tell me stories that, you know, if you go home, such and such killed so and so, and so and so did this to so and so, they made this other fellow mad, and this happened, and so, and I was going to school. And in our little community, I happen to be one of the few that actually went to secondary school and one of the few that eventually went to university. So there's so much protection upon me. And I knew also that I was in a kind of dangerous environment. 
and so on my own apart from what my father did my father did a lot of things you know with the blade he'll, you know make scratches on the center of the head in the forehead, in the forehead and also at the back on the wrist over here on the wrist over there also on the leg many many you know many miles and we'll count 21 we'll count 14 we'll count this and that and uh, you know rub this charcoal into it and you know while the thing is bleeding he will rub all that charcoal on it and everything like that although it was very peppery and very very serious very painful but because he was doing it for a kind of protection what could i do and when i saw that his own protection was not making it because of the things i was still going through so i started finding out myself and so I would, you know, go to this side and try to see a man myself. I wasn't born again. I was, I remember when I was in Form 3, 1959. And I, you know, on my own, I, you know, would go this direction and wanted protection. And when I saw that all that was not working, then I went to, you know, the white garment people. Because I thought if the black charcoal will not make it, the white garment will make it. You know, it's either black or white. And so if you tried black and you didn't succeed, maybe if you tried white, you'll be able to get something. And so I went to those directions as well. And you know, I, you know, they started, started giving us names, the name of this angel, the name of that angel. And, uh, you know, somebody will rise up and say, I had a dream and got a new name of a new angel. And I put all that down because, after all, when I was still in the secondary school, and I had not even, uh, you know, passed uh, to either from three or from uh, when I was still in form one, I had, you know, I think in form two, 1958, I had got a particular notebook. Because there was somebody uh, in, you know, my junior in form one. I was in form two, he was in form one. And uh, I watched him, and he appeared to be somebody that he said, if, uh, you know, this happens to you, if you take this leaf, and they take the cockroach, and burn, and join together, this will happen. So I would say, number one, I will write that down. And then number two, I will write that down. Number three, I write that down. So I had my biology notebook, I had my mathematics, I had my geography notebook, I also had my notebook for medicine. And uh, so eventually, when all those black things will not work, I then decided that I will go to the white garment people. And I happened to be one of the drummers in the white garment church. And so when, you know, all those, uh, they have... Uh, choruses will be going on and I see it at the you know place we uh, beat our drums and so I you know was a very a key leader among those people that will beat you know all those drums you never knew that before and uh, so and you know we will fast or pray I had my white garment and uh, you know I did all those things but the troubles were still there and so I then felt there was no solution in this area what then will I do and there was so much confusion in my heart. And so much affliction too. You know, afflictions on the dream and affliction during the day. And because of a lot of those afflictions, I then carried my Bible. I said, there must be solution somewhere. My daddy tried his best. He couldn't help. The herbalists have tried their best and they couldn't help. And the white garment people have tried their best. They couldn't help. I drank all the water that you call holy water and that couldn't help. I had my white garment and that couldn't help. I would go at the back of the church yard so that I would just, you know, fast and pray. And sometimes we'll be told, you know, if you humble yourself and you roll on the ground, all these problems will be solved. I tried every game in the court and no game actually worked. So I came back to the Bible. It's good to go back to the Bible. And as I came back to the Bible, then eventually I became born again on the 5th of April 1964. And when I became born again, now the problems did not immediately leave. And I was surprised. But you see, I had, there was a particular problem in the church I went to. Uh, our brothers, when they were answering the questions, they said, the counselors are there, the leaders are there, you go talk to them. There was no counselor in the church I went to. And if I went out to tell our pastor that I was having this problem and this problem, not that I was committing sin, but those afflictions were there. If I went to that pastor, he will say my salvation was not genuine. And I knew the salvation was genuine. And so what will I do? Now, you, you know what we call self-help textbooks? That is to just help yourself. And in my own days, we had, uh, you know, a calculus made easy. We had teach yourself mathematics. We had teach yourself this one, teach yourself that one. So I said, if it is possible to teach yourself mathematics, easy and possible for you to teach yourself, and uh, you know, government, if it's possible to teach yourself this, I have to teach myself faith. And the greatest thing you can teach yourself is faith. So I went to the word of God, and I discovered this word of God, never part with the word of God. This word of God, it has all the treasures that you will ever need. 
And one of the things he did for me is that it made me to understand to start with that my fears were baseless. False experiences appearing real. Do you know that one day Jesus Christ was walking on the sea. When the disciples saw him, they were disciples. They were children of God. They were followers of Christ. But when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, then they were afraid. They thought he was a spirit. False experiences appearing real. And he said, be not afraid, be of good cheer, it is I. And Peter said, if it is you, bid me come to you on the water. And he said, come. Just one word, come. So simple that a primary school child can understand the word, come. And so he left that boat and he came. And he actually stepped on the water and started walking. And then he saw again, he saw the wind boisterous. And he saw the storm. Once again, remember fear, false experiences appearing real. He thought he was going to die. He thought that the end has come. So because of false experiences appearing real, he began to sing. But he remembered to call out in time. We call it S-O-S. That is, don't get to the bottom before you do something. And here you are today, thank God you have not got to the bottom. And you are crying, there is an S-O-S unto the Lord. And I'm assuring you that tonight you are delivered in Jesus' name. And so he called upon the Lord and the Lord just said, you know, lifted him up. But he didn't put him on the shoulder, put him back on that same sea. And said, you can do it. Why did you fear? And so now they walked back into the boat. And I want to tell you that the Lord is still a gracious God. Before we pray, let me just show you some assuring verses of scripture. That when you have these scriptures, there is nothing to fear again. Because after all, a fear starts from a false thing. It's not even real. And uh, what, happened, what, what helped me in my younger years is that I learned that the devil is a liar. Did you know that? And if somebody is a liar, you're just taking your bath and then wanting to tease you and wanting to torture you or torment you, it says, uh, because you cannot see the back of your head, it says, ah, how is it you have just come out of the bathroom and there's so much soap at the back of your head? If you knew that person to be a liar, a confirmed liar, that he never speaks the truth, and whatever he says, you always should look for the opposite. If he says there is soap at the back of your, of your head, what is the truth? There is no soap at the back of your head. If you know somebody to be a confirmed liar, and then he says, Ah, you're still here. Your room is blue. And everything is burnt. If you know him to be a confirmed liar, and he says, Your room is all on fire. Your room is burning. What is the truth? Your room is not on fire. When I got that, I became free. When the devil will say, you will not be able to carry on till the end of your Christian race. Knowing that I realized I said you just told me the greatest truth I wanted to learn. Because you said I cannot, then I know I can. And if I became a little bit sick and then something will whisper, and I know Jesus will never say that. Jesus will never say this sickness will kill you. And I know that person saying this sickness will kill you. I know the direction is coming from. I know it's the devil. And the devil will say, You are going to die. You are going to die. What is going to be the benefit of all this mathematics you studied and all this labor and all this good certificate you've got? Because after all, now the whole thing is going to be useless and you are going to die. When I knew it was a liar saying that, I said, Thank you, Jesus. I am going to be alive. Because you know, I will not die, but I will live to declare the glories of the Lord. You see, when the devil tells you something, you know that the opposite is the real truth. You see, you just say, you know, you slept in the night and you had a dream. And when you had that dream, it appears you saw blood and everything. And then when you woke up, the devil said, there you are, your body is all divided. And part has been given to that, part has been given to that. You are finished. What I know is the devil saying that, I say, praise the Lord, I am in touch. I am not divided. Because, you know, if the devil says that all your flesh has been divided, then you know the opposite is the truth. And when I began knowing like that, and thinking like that, and responding like that, you know, the devil saw that he was wasting time with me, so he went to other people that didn't have the knowledge I had. 
And if the devil knows that you have got the truth, and you know that when he says something, the opposite is the truth, and you rejoice and you stand firmly on that, the devil is not going to continue wasting his life with you because he doesn't get through anymore. Because you have known that fear is false experiences appearing real, and therefore you are free. The sun shall set you free. Ye shall be free. 20%. 20%. Ye shall be free. Eighty percent. You know, some people when they pray, they say, "Oh God, I'm not even asking for total healing and total deliverance. All I'm asking is give me breathing space, so that at least I will be able to take my exam. If the sickness is going to come, let me finish my exam. That's not the promise of the Lord. If the Son shall set you free, ye shall be free indeed, one hundred percent." And that is the covenant I have with the Lord. Oh Lord, I don't want 99% freedom. I don't want 90% freedom. I want 100% freedom. In fact, do you know that uh, when I was at school, I don't know why the teacher did that. Well, maybe I understand now because I became a teacher later myself. And, uh, you know, it was in mathematics. And that's what encouraged me to further my study in mathematics. And he had a portion, you know, he had um, all these marks uh, for each of those, uh, for each of the numbers. And he said he was going to give 17 to one uh, to each point. And by the time he added everything together, then he saw that uh, he, he couldn't uh, deduct because he had given 17 there, 17 there, 17 there. 17 here, 17 here, 17 here. By the time he added up everything, uh, what's the addition? Uh... Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, you know, the calculators have spoiled our mathematics students. Because now they cannot add 17 plus 17 plus 17 in one row, 17 plus 17 plus 17 in the other row, and then get the answer. Again? And we are coming up. Uh, it's 102. So he gave me all the 102 and just said, uh, you know, that is it, you can have it. And then, uh, you know, uh, students started calling me mathematician, you know, from 2, 1958. And because of that, I just decided I was going to confirm their word. And so eventually I went through to do mathematics. And so since a human teacher can give 102 and they are similar, a time, they gave me 110%, over 100. And since uh, a human teacher can do that, then I decided when I became a Christian that God might also give me 102. And I might give me 110 that then he gives me the hundred percent that all the other people are praying for and then just to encourage me my chino just give me more than free indeed and that then I, I look at the promise of Jesus he said the people that believe in me the works I do he shall do hundred percent and greater works than this one on one other than two and greater works than these shall you do because I go unto the father and so, if all that is available for us, why should you be under sickness, under attack? When we know that our God is on our side, in Luke chapter 10, verse 19. Luke chapter 10, and we're looking at verse 19. It says, Behold, I give unto you power. That's giving you weakness. I see giving you weakness. It says, Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions, and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Praise the Lord. In Romans chapter 16, verse 20. Romans chapter 16, verse 20. And the God of peace shall bruise Satan under your feet shortly. Just in a few minutes now, the Lord will bruise the devil under your feet. In Revelation chapter 12, verse 11. Revelation chapter 12, verse 11. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb, and by the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives unto the dead. They overcame him by the blood of the Lamb. You see, the devil cannot cross the blood line. If, uh, you know, he's trying to make trouble, all you need to do is just sprinkle the blood of Jesus Christ upon yourself by faith. You see, in Egypt, when the death angel was to pass through all the land of Egypt, God told the children of Israel that they should put the blood upon the lintels and the side posts of their houses. Then he said something very significant. He said, when I see the blood, 
when I see the blood, when I see the blood, I will pass over you. Not when I see your knowledge of the Bible. Maybe someone, some people say, I don't have much knowledge. I don't have much understanding. Uh, what helped me uh, in, um, when I was at school uh, on this area of faith? Now, it was negative for us, and then God converted it for me to positive. The negative thing is this. You see, when I was at school, I was uh, particularly uh, low in history and geography, and the things that you have to spend a lot of time to read. Things changed later uh, when I became a Christian, but you see, all my secondary school days, I wasn't a real believer at that time. And so I will, uh, I will have my report sheet, and then they would, you know, on this side, they will say, you know, 100, 100, 100, which is the base mark uh, against which they are matching your own mark. And then they will put mathematics, they might put 76 or 89 or whatever. And in the other subjects, they put some other good marks. When it came to geography, they will put six. When it came to history, they might put, um, you know, something like 17. When it came to another subject, they might put uh, eight. And, uh, and my father was not very uh, rich, he was uh, poor. And if I took that paper home and he saw six, he wasn't going to mind the 76 or the 89 on the other part. Therefore, what he will do is that he will say six out of 100. And I knew that I was, I was in for trouble. And so before I took that paper home, you are Christians now, you can't do this. Before I took that paper home, I'll put a zero <laughs> after that six. When I do that, six became... 60. Now, when I became a Christian, I made recitation to my daddy, and I said, this is what I used to do. So, I didn't do that anymore. But then, it helped me this way. When I became a Christian, and the devil will tell me, you have no faith, you have no faith, you have no faith. Oh, I said, is that so? Since I knew that he was a liar, so I, I cornered him with my mathematics. And I said, all right, suppose I am a zero. And here is Jesus Christ, his unit, complete. Then I put my zero on the side of that unit, it becomes 10. I put another zero there, it becomes 100. And so, the devil may tell you tonight that, you know, as they're going to pray, you don't have any faith, you don't have any faith. Here is Jesus, he said, where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there in their midst. And he is complete. And therefore, we have that brother, we have that sister, zero, zero, and there's one here, we have 100% faith. And because of that 100% faith, we can approach God in prayer and say, we bind anything that is troubling anybody here. Even those who don't know what is going on and they're sleeping in the hostel now, our prayer is going to reach them. And the people who are here to our prayer is going to reach everyone. Uh, because you might say that all you have is a zero thing, but I want to tell you that Jesus is here, and by the grace of God, those of us who are believers were here, and here you are with your zero faith, come on the side of the Lord Jesus Christ, and we are going to overcome. Well, you might say that, you know, these things, are, they are great, and I've battled it, and the enemy is stronger than I am. Well, I have a verse of scripture for you in Jeremiah chapter 31. Jeremiah chapter 31, verse 11. Jeremiah chapter 31, and we are looking at verse 11. For the Lord has redeemed Jacob and ransomed him from the hand of him that was stronger than him. Maybe before you came to the Congress, you have been battling with that fellow, you've been battling with that demonic spirit and that evil power and that sickness, and you said, well, I don't know what I'm going to do. I have prayed, I have fasted, I've seen other people, and this thing appears to be stronger than I am. Well, the Lord will redeem you from he that is stronger than you are. And a time has now come. It says, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions, to tread upon them. I want you to stand up on that trouble. March upon it, because yours is the victory. I give unto you power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you.
In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. The time has come for your deliverance. And the time has come for your healing. Amen. Remember, all those fears coming from the devil, they are not real. They are false experiences appearing real. There is nothing for you as a child of God to fear. He has promised that he will heal you. He has promised that he will deliver you. It does not matter the source of the bondage. And it does not matter how that evil thing came in your life. It doesn't matter your family background. If the Son shall set you free, ye shall be free indeed. I want eyes closed and heads bowed. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this session. Although this session was not on our own timetable, but it was on your own timetable. And you have brought us to this session now, whereby we can invite and we can welcome the omnipotence of God, the power of the Almighty. And therefore, Lord, we welcome you. We welcome your power. We welcome your spirit. We welcome that anointing. We welcome the outpouring of your spirit in Jesus' name. Oh Lord, we are here gathered for you. We know that you are interested in us. And you have assured us that whatsoever we ask believing, we shall receive. And therefore, on behalf of my brothers and sisters, here in the auditorium, there in the hostel, there in the kitchen, there on the road, anywhere, oh Lord, I pray that your mighty power will fall upon every one of them right now in Jesus' name. Oh Lord, the assurance you have given us is that the Egyptians will see tonight. We will see them no more in Jesus' name. Therefore, Lord, we pray that you open the very windows of heaven and you shower down your blessing and your power upon your people tonight that, Lord, as we bind on earth, it will be bound in heaven. As we release and loose on earth, it will be released and loose in heaven in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray that this very night, all the walls of Jericho will fall before your people in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray that right now you begin the work. I pray that right now, marvelous things, wonderful things, things we've never heard, things we've never seen, that has, uh, that has been uh, waiting for us, you make available for everyone in Jesus' name. Now, I want quietness, and I just want you to bow your head and close your eyes. The fellow that has the problem in the brain, and it appears that your whole brain is going to scatter. You're even in this auditorium right in front of me. I just want you to raise up your hand. Thank you. God bless you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I come against that power of evil and that demonic oppression and affliction in that head. I command you with the authority of the Spirit of God upon my life. Come out in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father, because I know it is done. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Eyes closed, eyes bowed. The one that is wetting the bed in this uh, auditorium, this is uh, uh, number one, number two, number three auditorium, if I count from the choir auditorium. The one that is wetting the bed there, I just want you to raise up your hand and let's deal with Okay, God bless you. And if that is your problem in every other area, just raise up your hand. Father, in the name of Jesus. Oh Lord, I pray that whatever is wrong, that that wetting of the bed is there, I cancel it, I remove it, take it away in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, because I know it is done. In Jesus' name, I pray. On my left hand side over there, there is somebody that is having the venereal disease and you are trying to use a lot of medication and the thing has remained there. If you just raise up your hand, I'll be, thank you, God bless you. I'll be praying for you now. Father, in the name of Jesus, Almighty God, I come against that evil thing, that venereal disease. Oh Lord, I command that it be destroyed in Jesus' name. 
I thank you because I know it is done. In Jesus' name I pray. There's somebody here that is having the fear of having HIV virus, it's bowed, eyes closed. That fear comes upon you and uh, you know it's coming and saying that AIDS is there, AIDS is there because you have the HIV virus. Where are you? Can you raise up your hand? Okay, God bless you, that's it. Father, in the name of Jesus, I come right now against that fear and against that possibility at all in that person's life. I know that what I bind on earth is bound in heaven. What I lose on earth is loose in heaven. I cancel that thing from your life in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father, because I know it's done. In Jesus' name I pray. The person that has the pile, if you just raise up your hand, uh, you have the pile, if you raise up your hand, I'll just uh, pray for you here. That's in the, uh, there's number one, there's number two auditorium, there's somebody I'm looking for there with the pile. Uh, number two auditorium, that small auditorium, where are you? Your yeah, pile, where is up behind and wave it at me, I want to see, okay, that's the person over there. I want your hand up, if, if that is also your problem, just raise up your father in the name of Jesus. That pile, I cancel it in Jesus' name. Oh Lord, I pray that the manifestation of your power will come upon their bodies right now and you will take it away in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father, because I know you have answered. In Jesus' name I pray. The one in the last auditorium here, this is in the seventh auditorium with the noise in your ear and it's disturbing you, wanting to run you mad, wanting to drive you insane. If you are there, okay, God bless you. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I thank you because your manifestation of power and the gifts of the Spirit is here available. Therefore, Lord, all that noise of the devil with the authority of the name of Jesus and the power of the Holy Ghost, I come against you. Come out in Jesus' name. And I pray that those people you be delivered in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father, because I know you have answered. In Jesus' name I pray. There's a fellow that had a dream and they shot at you in the dream and it got right into your chest. And then when you woke up, the pain has been there. And sometimes when the pain grips you suddenly, you will hold your chest as if it is going to bring a dagger in you. I want that person to raise, okay, God bless you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I come against that evil thing, not that evil personality, and that dart and that arrow of enemy. I command you, come out in Jesus' name. Oh Lord, I pray that that evil personality that has been causing that problem, you will remove that thing, you will solve that problem, you will heal this individual in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, because I know it is done. In Jesus' name, I pray. Uh, the people that have hypertension, you, uh, the reason I'm not pointing to any hall is because you are quite, there's quite a number. You have hypertension, just raise up your hand, and I'm going to pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I just pray right now that you lay your mighty hand upon them. And Lord, I pray that the blood pressure will become normal in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, because I know you have answered. In Jesus' name, I pray. Somebody here that the woman in your family, uh, very close to your family, but not your mother, uh, threatened you and said, hey, okay, go to school and we will see the outcome. And you've been trying to do your best, but just getting near the exam time, it's either you fall sick or something will happen, or the trauma in the heart will not allow you to concentrate. Even while you're in the exam hall, there's a particular day you're having the exam like this, the temptation came strongly on you that you should just rise up and go out because there was no use. Although you tried and, you know, you've been trying your best, but then you have been meeting with real disappointment and failure. And I want to tell you tonight that the Lord has rolled that problem away. And if... And if that is you I'm talking about, I want you to raise up your hand and the Lord is going to deliver you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you because you have come to deliver your people. And therefore, Lord, the word of that woman, the curse coming from that woman, I cancel it in Jesus' name. And Lord, I pronounce success, I pronounce victory, and I pronounce progress for all these people in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father, because I know you have answered. In Jesus' name, I pray. The one that is having the problem with tuberculosis, if you raise up your hand, it will be cleared immediately. The one that is having the problem of tuberculosis, if you raise up your hand, it will be cleared immediately. I'm waiting for you. I've not seen your hand. Okay, God bless you. 
Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you because I know that you are a God of all power. Oh Lord, I pray that that tuberculosis in its very virus and jam, I cancel it, I destroy it, be put to death in Jesus' name. Set those individuals free in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father, because I know you have answered. In Jesus' name, I pray. As bad and eyes close, uh, it was during the time of the holidays, and as you were, you know, just in that locality, a man saw you, and without you asking anything, he started to say some things as if he was uh, saying a prophecy. And uh, you didn't ask any question, you just met this uh, fellow, what will say accidentally. And then he began to tell you that this negative thing will happen when you get to this thing, when you get to this time, this evil thing will happen. And in some years now that that had happened, and now as you look at your life now, the person I'm talking about, you have seen that some of those things are coming true. And it's bringing real, real fear into your life, saying, well, this man said so, and this man said so, am I in for trouble? I want to tell you that if that's you that I'm talking about, I'm canceling that thing here tonight. And so I want that person to raise up the hand and you will be delivered immediately. God bless you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you because you are the God of all power. Whatever Satan has said, we can change it. Whatever Habalis has said, we can change it. Whatever any Juju man has said, we can change it. Whatever any astrologist or gazer has said, we can change it. And therefore, Lord, I stand in the authority and the anointing you have given me tonight. And I change all those evil bad things and I turn everything around. And I pray that these individuals are delivered in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father, because I know it is known. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. I want you to lay your hand upon yourself, whatever it is. We're coming from any direction. It is this very moment, this very time. Everything is going to be taken out of the way. Father, in the name of Jesus, we bless your name because you are a good God. We bless your name because you are a mighty God. I bring everyone, everyone, as they lay their hands upon themselves now, I bring everyone before you. I pray, Lord, that problem in the stomach, take it away in Jesus' name. That thing crawling on your body right there, you feel the sensation that stops you. I command, come out in Jesus' name. That fellow that they, you think that you have epilepsy, I command that spirit of epilepsy, come out in Jesus' name. The pain in the chest of that individual, I command you, come out in Jesus' name. That person appears you have a water head, when you shake your head, you almost be hearing the sound of water. I command that thing to stop in Jesus' name. That fellow there that whenever you wake up in the morning, you'll see marks on your body that were not there the night before. I cancel that evil personality. I cancel that evil oppression upon your life. Come out in Jesus' name. That thing that you are taking to the hospital and they said that there was nothing they could do. And you have been you have been suffering the pain, or you take pain relieving tablets. Oh Lord, I pray right now that your mighty power will come upon these people and you remove the pain, you remove the sickness, and set them free in Jesus' name. The fear in the heart of that individual that you'll never make it, you'll never succeed, you'll never be able to reach where you are going. I cancel it because it is coming from the devil. Fear is not from God, it's coming from the devil. Therefore, Lord, I cancel that thing and I pray, oh Lord. Come out in Jesus' name. The fellow that last night, uh, you, you, you have come to this uh, congress, and last night, as you thought about your life, you were all the time, all alone by yourself, you were crying, and saying, oh God, look at me, look at this. You are taking inventory of your life, and instead of rejoicing, you had seen enough trouble that you were crying. All those tears are wiped away in Jesus' name. Oh Lord, I pray that the blood of Jesus will be sprinkled upon everyone here. And all those powers of demons and powers of familiar spirit and all the causes in their lives, I take it away in Jesus' name. Oh Lord, I pray that everyone, everyone, everyone here tonight, they will never be the same again. That sickness that has followed you here upon which you are laying your hand now, that sickness I command you melt away and do not remain there. Come out in Jesus' name. Oh Lord, set your people free. O oh Lord, set your people free. O oh Lord, set your people free. And let us see the very clear manifestation of your deliverance and healing, even now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father, because I know you have answered. In Jesus' name I pray. Jesus set me free. I can.
cannot be bound, Jesus set me free. I cannot be bound, Jesus set me free. I cannot be bound, I cannot be bound. Jesus set me free. I cannot be bound, oh yes, Jesus set me free. I cannot be bound. Jesus set me free. Jesus set me free. Do that. 
in the work of the Lord for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. The labor of all church workers shall never be in vain as our Father, the Father of all globally, the convener of GCK, Pastor Dr. W. F. Kamui gives us the Global Church Workers Conference live from Taraba State, Nigeria. All church workers and ministers globally to join hands with all ministers across Taraba State, Northern Nigeria from 17 to 20 November 2022. It's our time for triumphing in ministry, even in troublous times. Pastor Dr. W. F. Kubuyi will be ministering 8 a.m. daily from Jalingo, Taraba State, to the world, via satellites and all our social media platforms. It will be an avalanche of global expositions and revelations. Your labor will not be in vain. When we started the year 2022, you had hopes, you had desires, you had dreams, but suddenly, all over the globe, we read and hear of failures economically, politically, with climate change and security breaches here and there. And now, I hear a voice echoing towards the northeastern geopolitical zone of Nigeria. Now, I hear a voice echoing towards the northeastern geopolitical zone of Nigeria. Today, the Lord is saying, weep not. All your tears are dried because behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David has prevailed. And it's confirmed that there's still one hope, one way, one solution and one power that never fails. The power of Jesus Christ reverberates this November with GCK live from Adamawa State, Nigeria. The land of beauty set to beautify your life through Christ. As the covenant of GCK, Pastor Dr. W.F. Kumuyi will touch down in Adamawa, Nigeria with a power that never fails. Healing, deliverance, salvation. November 24 to 29, 2022. 1600 hours GMT daily and 0700 hours GMT for Sunday worship service. Young people from all levels will be empowered for excellence at the Impact Academy on November 26, 2022 at 0600 hours GMT. Ministers and professionals will be empowered for breakthrough in ministry on November 25, 26, 28 and 29 at 0600 hours GMT. Our guest gospel minister is Bob Feets. This is an avalanche of manifestation of the power that never fails for all lives. Power will herald your celebration. Dr. William Kumui says, Be it confirmed in your life in Jesus' name. GCK, the gospel to every creature. <laughs> 